This one is the new entry into the niche that is compact dual tower coolers and it's actually pretty good. Welcome to Machines and More. 135 millimeters. That has been the meaningful threshold to many SFF enthusiasts because you know you want to put the absolute tallest tower cooler that you can into the end case M1. And I guess now it's the M1 Classic. Um, but the problem is there aren't too many towers that are equipped with 120 millimeter fans that meet that low of a clearance. Previously, I took a look at one such cooler in the Thermal Right Silver Soul 135, and today we'll be comparing against that one again. But uh, this new entrant, the ID Cooling SE207 XT Slim, I think you're going to want to pay some attention to this one, especially if you are interested in out of the box performance if you're shopping in this height. And a big thanks to ID Cooling for providing the cooler for our testing here today. This review isn't sponsored and the review findings are all a product of my independent research and testing. Okay, so while the M1 Classic has been retired, the evolution of that product is in the works and you also have the upcoming and much anticipated Dan Case C4 SFX, which will support up to 145 millimeters. Also, you've got the Sliger Cerberus. So in other words, while the market, it is limited still, the size bracket of cooler will absolutely still be relevant to a lot of folks dabbling in small form factor. Uh, due to the physical dimensions of a 120 millimeter fan, 130 millimeters is just about the absolute minimum you can design the entire cooler tube. I mean, you still have to have a metal base plate and heat pipes after all, but the design limitation with this type of minimized tower is often the mounting screws that secure the heatsink to the mounting hardware attached to your motherboard. Since if they're not designed and positioned properly, they're just going to push that fan out well beyond the heatsink. So one way manufacturers like Nocta and Thermalright and now also ID Cooling have designed around it is to modify your typical square 120 millimeter fan and you just lop off the corners to accommodate a taller set of screws. So you end up with something like this octagon shape. Uh, of course, that's not always necessary though. As you can see here, the Nocta NFA 12 by 25, it just has uh, cutouts in the fan frame that happened to accommodate those screws and now it's level with the heat pipe cover anyway. At any rate, it doesn't adversely affect the performance characteristic of the fans. The SE207XT Slim is a lower version of the SE207XT, uh, which we've tested for, and it's a single fan cooler instead of a dual fan. It does come with two additional sets of fan clips if you want to attach an additional fan or two if you want, depending on how much clearance you have on both sides. Compatibility is up to date. In addition to the previous Intel generations, you do have LGA 1700 support, M4, M5, and even compatibility with LGA 2011 and 2066 sockets if you're running any of those HEDT sockets. You get a matte black heatsink here and it has quite a few heat pipes. This is kind of the headline feature for me because you, can, you have seven dual loop heat pipes that run through the nickel plated base plate and you have a very basic uh, heat pipe cover at the top, uh, plastic here. I've noticed ID Cooling often puts their branding on these covers, but not with this one. Uh, the two split towers are rectangular, they're squares, right? Uh, there's no meaningful sculpting like uh, you might see with the Noctua and the Thermalright also has some airflow grooves cut out there. So pretty basic design here. The heatsink mass is 630 grams compared to 615 on the Thermalright SS135 and there's no RAM overlap. Uh, with either of these uh, heat sinks on an ITX board, so really that won't be a concern at all. Uh, with both these coolers, you get a basic 120 millimeter fan to round out the ensemble. So stealthy looking cooler in the black finish, and it actually performs quite well out of the box. I do have my testing setup built into the Cooler Master on a Chewinger, which you know you don't need a cooler this slow for that case, and perhaps it might be more appropriate to test in the end case. But uh, I don't think you're likely to see any major differences in the cooler rankings simply because of the case choice, especially when there are two uh, quite similar layouts and the sizing isn't enormously different. Out of the box, at an intermediate noise level, the SE207 Slim does get the nod here. At least the noise normalized performance is a bit better against the stock performance from the thermal right. At a slightly higher noise level, the SE207 Slim doesn't improve much, so likely it's been optimized for this band of performance 
around 1500 RPM on its stock fan. And at this level, thermal right does close the gap a little bit, but it still lags behind. So out of the box, I think this is a really serious contender, but let's just test the heat sink here. Because uh, if we use the Noctua NFA 12 by 25 at the same RPM across three coolers, I uh, will footnote that the V12L does use its stock R version of the fan here, but it's uh, otherwise all but identical in terms of performance. The Thermora is the one that pulls ahead here, and this series of tests, well, it's gonna help us tease out which heatsink is superior, so that's relevant if you're just gonna upgrade the fan anyway. Uh, we don't see a huge gap here, but I think the stock fan on the Thermorite SS135 is absolutely holding it back. And both these coolers are outperforming the Noctua D12L, which is not only a very premium price cooler, but it's also 10 millimeters taller. Full speed on that Noctua fan, the D12L does improve quite a bit, so it's very possible that Noctua heatsink, it was optimized for that level of airflow, uh, the max RPM of the fan. But uh, in reality, these are all remarkably close. I didn't test the D12L with the Fantex T30. It really does not fit well into the gap, especially with those dagger sharp heat fins there. But uh, I think we have a good idea where that heat sink stands already. So for some extra confirmation here though, we'll, we will test the 30 millimeter Fantex T30, which it's really tight, but uh, it's acceptable on both the ID and the thermal right. And there's no uh, sharp points on the inside of this that'll snag it. So it's actually okay. And just for testing purposes on the thermal right, the friction was enough to hold the fan in place with the SC207X. So you can strong arm the clips into place with that 30 millimeter fan, uh, but uh, I would still recommend a 25 millimeter fan if you just wanted to upgrade the fans for either of these coolers because the performance is pretty similar uh, with the higher end fans here. Here are the Thermorite SS135. It's the superior heatsink with a thicker fan at the higher RPM level as well. And practically speaking, there's very little difference between the NFA 12 by 25 versus the T30 here. So for more seamless compatibility and fit, the 25 millimeter fan absolutely gets to nod here. It'd be the better choice. And if you want to keep the look at the rounded corners, you could even go for the R version of the NFA 12 by 25 that the D12L uses. Both of these heat sinks are very, very good. The ID with seven heat pipes and the Thermorite with six heat pipes appear to be equally great choices. And while it only has five heat pipes, the Noctua heat sink is clearly quite comparable, but it is 10 millimeters taller. And as we saw, the quality of the D12L stock fan is what gives it that great out of the box performance. And you're absolutely paying for that. As of now, I don't have any pricing info on the 207 XT Slim just yet. Retail availability is forthcoming at least in the US, and I couldn't find it any retail outlets just yet, but just an educated guess based off of the regular SE207 XT and the other ID coolers. I think hopefully it's somewhere around $45 US, and uh, it's gonna have to be around there since the thermal right it's really competitively priced right now. So for example, as of late August, 2022, right now when the video is being released, you can get the black version of the Thermorite cooler for around $50. And the silver one, it's going for less at about 40 bucks. So that's a pretty good choice as well, given the price. We'll see how the new end case shapes up. I'm super excited about that project and hey, You've got a few choices now for tower coolers. So when that case rolls around, we'll be sure to take another test drive with these two. So I hope that was informative. If so, please give a like. I will be leaving product links down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today.